iPen. Hey, my name is Jesper Galley, and today we're talking about the debt service coverage ratio. I got a really cool message on YouTube from, I'm gonna hopefully not butcher this name, Rowan Hawishi. Basically, I told him I would go in a little bit more detail on what this metric is. So debt service coverage ratio, let's jump into it. So what I like to do with the debt service coverage ratio is talk about what it is, how it's used, and why it's so important in the real estate world. So the debt service coverage ratio is a relationship between the net operating income of a property and the ability for you to make your debt payments. And in this case, to keep it really simple, for debt payments, we're just talking about your mortgage. So debt service coverage ratio, or DSCR, is an actual ratio. And it being a ratio, it is basically showing how many times more net operating income do you have than actual debt service. So if you had a ratio that equals two, you know that you have two times more net operating income than the actual debt payments. And we'll show that in an example. Now, if you have less than one, that means you're negatively cash flowing, right? Because your NOI doesn't even come up to even meet your actual debt service. So 0.9, for example, would mean that your net operating income is 90% of your debt payments. Not good, you want it to be the other way around. So the debt service coverage ratio can kind of put it out here, debt service coverage ratio equals your net operating income, NOI, divided by your debt service. So if we do a really easy example here, we would have, for instance, you have a property that has a net operating income that's equal to $120,000. And when you add up all of your mortgage payments, uh, principal and interest, it equals $100,000. We do the simple math there, and you're gonna get a debt service coverage ratio of 1.2. So 1.2 to 1.3 is usually that sweet spot of where lenders wanna see you. They wanna see that you can cover above and beyond your debt payments, usually by 20, 25, 30%. And that's what that 1.2 to 1.3 would represent. So ultimately what it is, is a cap on how much that you're allowed to borrow from a lender. So this is one of two major metrics that lenders will look at. The other one typically being loan to value, which we can talk about in a future video. So if you know from the bank that they said that they will accept a ratio of 1.25, then the only thing you need to figure out at that point is the net operating income of the building. So the net operating income I did in another video and I'll put a link above me so you can check that out. And let's see how that would work. So say that the bank here, Mr. Bank says 1.25. Well, say you had a property that had a net operating income of, let's call it $70,000. That means that if we look at our formula, the debt service coverage ratio formula equals the NOI, right? Divided by the debt service. Well, what things do we know here? We know that the debt service coverage ratio is 1.25, right? And we also know that $70,000 is the NOI. So the only thing we're missing is the actual debt service payments. We wanna know how much we can actually pay or how much we're allowed to pay. So we swap that, just a little quick algebra, and that basically means that the DS is going to be 70,000 divided by 1.25. Two five, And if you take out the old calculator, that would be 70,000 divided by 1.25. That means it's $56,000. And divide that by 12 and you have your monthly mortgage payments. So just so we're absolutely crystal clear here, we have $56,000. What is that? That is the annual debt service. So $56,000. Let's just make this. Now, monthly debt service would just be dividing 56,000 uh, equals 56,000 divided by 12. So 4,666. That is what the bank is saying that you're not allowed based on the debt service coverage ratio we gave. That's the maximum amount that your payment can be. It can't be any greater than that. So the million dollar question is, Based on that number, that 46, you know, and change, what is the total amount of debt that you can get with that? 
And to do this, you can use a financial calculator, or I like to just go to a website, it's called amortization-calc.com, and a little bit of a trial and error. Um, but basically, you go in here, get your mortgage is the loan type. Now, I'm gonna use a 25-year amortization, pretty standard mortgage, and whichever interest rate that you have in your area, um, you know, put that in, let's just say 3.5%. Now, I already did this, so I think 930,000 roughly, like I said, trial and error, will get approximately close to what we need. So you calculate this, and it's really close. So you see here, 4,655. So what is that telling us? That basically is saying that approximately, based on this calculator, that a 25-year term mortgage, 3.5% interest rate, we can borrow about $930,000 roughly to make sure that the payment does not exceed 4600 again roughly 46 uh, you know 4666 so that's the way you go from figuring out the debt service coverage ratio figuring out what the total amount of debt service you're allowed and then finally the last step figuring out how much debt does that equate to you know, at the end of the day, that's what we wanna know. How much debt can we put on a certain property? So these are just ways to not only figure out what your debt service ratio is, but more than that, also figure out what your debt is capped at if the bank or lender gives you a ratio to stay below. All right, debt service coverage ratio recap. What is it? We know what it is. It's net operating income divided by your debt service, which is your mortgage, interest plus principal. Why is it used? Well, we know that too. It's used by commercial lenders and banks to determine how large of a loan they can give us, the investors. It's also used by investors to see how cash flow positive they are and how much their NOI will go to cover their debt service and how it's used. Well, in our example, we knew that if we had two out of the three variables, we could figure out the third. Okay, thanks for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, hit the subscribe button. And if you have any comments, questions, or you'd like to see a particular video in the future, put that down below, because ultimately, I'd rather do content that you guys want. All right, that's it for me. You have a good one.